And for more on the wave of Chinese acquisitions, we're joined by Jack Prakowski live from Beijing. He's the managing partner of JFP Holdings. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure, Michelle. So, Jack, Chinese overseas investment surged 53% during the first eight months of the year. What is driving this? Well, the, the you know, fundamental trend that's driving it is, is the desire by Chinese companies to get access to advanced technology and also access to markets outside China. This trend has actually been a long time in coming, and, and it, it all kind of came together this year. And so uh, this is something that we've been expecting for, for some time, and a variety of factors have combined to, uh, to make this year, you know, the year when China really broke out as far as buying companies overseas. Well, is it perhaps concerning in any way that so much capital is aimed overseas as opposed to domestically? No, because, you know, China still, uh, you know, brings in a lot of foreign direct investment. There's a lot of capital uh, in China. I think uh, China as a country and, and individual companies within China are looking to diversify. I mean, it's no secret that the Chinese economy is slowing. It's still growing at a healthy pace, but the gap between China and the other uh, countries of the world is narrowing somewhat. So I think a lot of companies see that now's the right time to take that step and start diversifying their markets. Plus, all Chinese companies want to be global, and, and that means that they have to have the latest in technology. They have to have access to the big markets of the United States and Europe and so forth. So, you know, those are some of the things that are driving this trend to buying overseas assets. Well, Jack, you're mentioning diversification and you're mentioning technology. Which sectors or industries are attracting the most Chinese capital? Well, you know, the, you know, it's no, you know, the auto industry, for example, in China is, continues to be a very fast-growing business. So you see, uh, you know, many auto companies in China buying companies overseas to get access to that, uh, to that technology. Uh, other types of higher technology sectors. I mean, China's 13th five-year plan, the emphasis is on advanced manufacturing, uh, higher technology, robotics, and so forth. And so, you, you know, you're seeing Chinese companies, you know, really looking to companies in Europe and the United States that have those higher technologies. So it's really the technology-driven sectors of the economy that the Chinese companies are most interested in. Well, Jack, to your point of these Chinese companies targeting overseas tech companies, um, we're seeing several issues like uh, Medea, which bid for German robotics manufacturer KUKA, and some other companies have been met with resistance and some protectionism issues. How much of a concern is this? Well, it's it's a concern, you know, and generally, uh, you know, if you look at the, you know, where the destinations for Chinese investment has been, actually, Europe has gotten a bigger share of it than the United States. So one of the reasons is that European countries in general have been more friendly towards Chinese investment. In the United States, uh, you have this organization called CFIUS, you know, which basically reviews every uh, overseas investment into the United States by. Uh, overseas companies uh, to see what impact, if any, you know, they might have on, on national security. So, you know, the, uh, you know, those regulatory issues or those political issues have played a major role in, uh, in, 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 in keeping some of the companies out of, uh, you know, out of these markets. There's no question that that's a factor. But we've seen this across the board from Europe to the U.S., even in Australia, where China is the number one trading partner with Australia blocking the sale of Ausgrid, the, the country's power grid, to, to Chinese investors. Is this a pervasive trend, then? I think that, you know, there's always going to be that natural resistance. It's going to be, you know, very specific to countries. It's going to be very specific to different types of, uh, of industries. I think that, uh, you know, the, one of the things that's happening to maybe counter that is the fact that Chinese companies now that have made acquisitions, in general, uh, you know, those acquisitions have gone reasonably well for the acquired companies. The managements have been kept in place. The Chinese companies have invested further in those countries. Uh, you know, so I think that the Chinese companies are getting a better reputation overseas as far as how, 
you know, they kind of conduct and how they operate these acquisitions after they've been acquired. So while you're certainly going to have, you know, this political or other types of resistance to Chinese companies, I think that's going to begin to wear down as we get more experience in this area and Chinese companies can demonstrate that they can be, you know, good corporate citizens in whatever country they operate. Okay, thanks so much. We're going to have to leave it there. We're out of time. Jack Brukowski, managing partner of JFP Holdings.